actually think this review is going to be a little bit more divisive uh, than probably a lot of our other ones, which is good for our kind of first, well, for my first comeback one in a long time, because I don't think I like this movie as much as anybody else who give a score in for the website. <laughs> no. No, I, when uh, cause Simon's put up the kind of cumulative score that uh, he's been doing over the last year. Oh, so what that, that, yeah, what that come out as? Eighty-five uh, percent, I think. Okay. Eighty percent. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. It was it was above eighty, uh, which was was a lot higher than what I give it. <laughs> are you, I was going to say, are you allowed to review your score? Or are we bound by the Data Protection Act? Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't <laughs> I haven't checked in with Simon about all this, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I've just brought it up there. So, like, oh, God, how many people saw it? Eight people saw it for us, and it came out with a score of uh, 83.4%, which is very, very fucking specific. Um, <laughs> I love this bit of his ear. <laughs> um, new battery system is brilliant. I think, um, oh, God, I think off the top of my head, I, I give it, like, a, a 65%. Gosh. Which is, like... So- a kind of like a high three star film, I think. So you jumped off the hype train, basically. I'm not really on the hype train. I I, I have no affinity for Deadpool. So um, I that's going to be my first question to you. How much were you aware of Deadpool and into Deadpool beforehand? Whether it be from the games, the comics, the other movie that it was in, or just the general kind of marketing. I know a lot of. I, I know. I, I always think I'm a bit strange in that I don't read many comics, but I know a fuck ton about them because um, one of my first jobs when I left school was uh, kind of working in IT in a, in, in a school and there was very little to do a lot of the time. So I used to spend shit tons of time just reading random things on Wikipedias and, and I learned a lot about Marvel Comics. And um, I've listened to a lot of... I don't know if you guys have heard of a YouTube channel called uh, Comics Explained, or it used to be Marvel Explained, but expanded mm-hmm. to DC as well. And I've watched a shit ton of those videos because the guy who does them is really, really good. Um, and he goes into a, a lot of detail about Deadpool. So I like to think I know a fair bit about him, considering I've never read a Deadpool comic. But fair enough. I, I, certainly, I certainly am not like a fan of the character. He, I kind of like like him because he's like the, he's like a comedic element in the Marvel universe. Um, yeah. And he has a lot of run-ins with uh, Thanos in the comics, and I, I, I really like Thanos, so I probably know more about him because of that than Deadpool. Yeah, himself. I mean, I'd say I'm, I'm largely in the same boat as you in the sense that I didn't really read the comics. Uh, a very good friend of mine bought me Deadpool Annual, which is like the first collection of his comics. Well, some of the best of his comics, including like his first appearance. He's very different in the early comics, though. He's like a serious character, isn't he? Yeah, um, I mean, he was supposed to be originally kind of uh, a parody of Deathstroke, hence the name Deadpool, and his kind of <laughs> makeup and his get-up and the way he looks and his uh, use of swords and stuff. Yeah, actually, then now that you what, mentioned that, I can really, really see that. Like, it's, 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 it's ridiculous how obvious it is. <laughs> yeah, and then more and more as time has gone on, he just kind of kept away and then had him breaking the fourth wall and then had him kind of... Uh, be self-aware that he's in a comic and had him, you know, just do really crazy, outrageous things. And it's just built up from there on and on and on. And I think the first time I really kind of ran into Deadpool was the uh, uh, Marvel Alliance games, if you remember those. Where oh, you God. Kind of... Were they like the action RPGs? Yeah, they were like the Diablo of the Marvel Universe. And Deadpool was in them. And I just thought this character is completely odd and separate to all the other characters that you play as. And he just... From there, I just kind of stand and looked into him and who he was, what he did. Um, and it, yeah, it was just kind of built up from there. And then you had the Wolverine movie came out, that was his first proper full screen appearance. <laughs> which uh, was, yep. uh, <laughs> which we see quite a bit of factor. I don't know much about the comics personally. I've never really gotten into the comics on that side of things, but I've picked up quite a bit, I guess, from, from the movies and since I first heard of him. From Wolverine, really. Did you hear about him before Wolverine? Did you know going into Wolverine that he was going to be there and he was going to have a part? He was going to yeah, be I'd heard the hype, but I hadn't heard much more than that. And I okay. kind of liked the idea of the character. And it was only then after that kind of movie, or during that movie, that I kind of fell for the character a bit, really. I should just uh, point out, because obviously you can tell we're fucking rusty, um, I, I just should introduce who's on the podcast. Obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm Ben. Uh, we've got... Uh, Cash with us tonight. Hello. And I've just got Mark. Hello. Just so we know who everybody is. <laughs> who's, who, whose voice belongs to who? <laughs> um, so yeah, like we all seem to have kind of varying degrees. None of us seem to be big 
Deadpool fans, like you seem to probably be the most cash. Did you buy the? Did your friend get you the annual after the? You've seen the film or? No, no, he got it from my. He, he's a huge, huge comic book reader and a comic book geek, and uh, I would always kind of speak to him about Deadpool and just really off um, references to comics and characters that I didn't really kind of find an answer for on the internet. And he would kind of nine times out of ten know what was going on and what was the history. <laughs> so he got me Deadpool because he hates uh, Marvel in movies. Like almost every Marvel movie, he just loads. Really? I think I think to an extent he's a bit of a hipster like that. As much as I love him, I yes. think he's just it, it'll never be the comics will. It'll never be that the movies are going to live up to the comics. And I think that's probably the biggest part of it. So he's always trying to convince me, you know, the comics are the best and the Deadpool comics. Um, he's not always breaking the fourth wall and when he does it's really subtle and he's much more like this and I can see that when I was reading the comics like as you say he's, he's completely different tone to the yeah there's like, I think Deadpool. there's like three definitive eras of Deadpool there's like the serious original one then there's one where he starts to break the fourth wall and then there's kind of modern Deadpool I could be completely wrong here but this is my understanding of it there's modern Deadpool where it is the kind of zany I know I'm in the comic type of craziness yeah, it's it's largely like that, and I think that's just kind of being capitulated by uh, the games and the movies that have brought him into the limelight. As more and more people know that he's this unique comic book character that knows he's you know a work of fiction essentially, and that he can interact with the audience, uh, it gives him that limelight, and they've just kind of put him up more and more towards that aspect of it. I mean, he's still got kind of interesting backstories and uh, parallel uh, universes where he does all kinds of crazy things like oh yeah. There's a yeah. Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. I know yeah, quite a bit Deadpool about that. Killustrated, yeah, he just basically kills absolutely everyone and everything. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't it doesn't at the end of that do like he comes for the uh, the writers and then like in the last pain he's he turns to the audience and says, Oh I'll see you real soon <laughs> It's something like that, yeah. He's there's like a huge um fight between all the Deadpools as well from all the different universes and there's he, 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 he fights Sherlock Holmes and uh, <laughs> it gets really kind of zany and insane. That's what you want sometimes, though. Something a bit different. Something, you know, away from what you normally read. In the well, I mean, this or, is it. I think, think I, wonder if, I wonder if that's kind of the reason why uh, he is where he is right now because he's that character and he's not like your kind of standard Wolverine or your X-Men or your Avengers. It's very hard for a novice to tell them apart whereas for Deadpool, you can kind of relate to the character and to the audience in that sense because you can address them directly he's a he's, he's yeah. kind of a bit of a joke character he's kind of uh, he's kind of on the level of like squirrel girl which is also another kind of joke <laughs> character in the marvel universe in that but but because he's got ties to like originally being serious they seem to tie him close to two other things like you know he's obviously very uh, he's tied to the x-men um because he started off in x-force which i think was a spin-off of x-men um and that's in like a serious era so yeah. He seems to be still very much rooted in the shared Marvel universe, but he's still very much. He seems to be now a joke character. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what's got, that's what they've gone for, isn't it? That kind of different side of things. I guess it's just a, a flip side of the coin. It's like they call, they call him uh, an, what an anti-hero, don't they? Because, uh, <laughs> like it's supposed to be. That's what I quite like about this film is that it's anti-hero, but anti-hero movie movie. Like it, it, yeah, he's, he's taken all the Marvel because there's loads of Marvel movies, and some of them are fantastic, and some of them are a bit. Rich at times, but it kind of got. It, it's nice to have a contrast, really, compared to the, to the others that are currently out there. And I think that's why it's done so well because it's not your run of the mill rated E for everyone or U for Universal uh, <laughs> Marvel movie. Uh, it's, it's kind of gone straight for the R rated because that's kind of what he is in the comics. He's swearing and he does all kinds of weird and wonderful and not very really child friendly things. Well, so yeah, it's I mean, good that they've kind of kept him to that level. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we talk quite a bit about Deadpool as a character, but coming around to this movie, um, you, you're right. I mean, this obviously is like this is like the first R-rated Marvel film since what, like Blade, like was a thing. I think. Oh yeah, and the, <sighs> last, as well. the last, yeah, I think the last one I can think of was probably Punisher, the more recent one, rather. Sorry. Oh, Warzone, yeah, with um, yeah. Uh, Ray Stevenson, where he yep. was like, he was like pretty much a Jason Voorhees character, just going around <laughs> murdering everybody. Yeah, it's completely insane. But I mean, that was kind of the last R-rated Marvel comic uh, movie that I could think of. And the recent ones, the ones that have kind of smashed all the box office records and had all their lines of toys and had all the uh, huge fan base has always been like the Marvel Avengers and the Iron Mans and the Captain Americas. Yeah, which to be fair to them, they don't generally require 
R ratings. Their the tone of their source material isn't such that it requires that. Whereas Deadpool is, you know, he's that kind of he's aimed at all the teens. He's a bit more violent. He you know he uses swords to cut people up and he shoots people dead. He's not Captain America who runs around with a shield bashing people. Uh, you know, kind of in like a kapow kind of way. Yeah, he's definitely um, not friendly in that sense. So. I think I mean for one of the things I really did like about this movie is that it did go for the R rating because it's kind of essential to his character. Yeah, if you're gonna have someone who's notoriously um, really good at killing people and making lewd sexual references and really rude words, you can't have it kind of at a rating that's just gonna be suitable for younger audiences. You need to kind of put it up there. And I mean, I remember there was like a very early uh, marketing video where he's. Uh, I think Ryan Reynolds is being interviewed by um, Mario Lopez, also known as AC Slater from uh, Saved by the Bell. And, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's, AC Slater, Mario Lopez, is basically saying, "Oh, you, I hear you're going for the um, lower age rating to make it accessible for everyone. That's really good." And Ryan Reynolds is like, "No, no, we're not doing that." And then towards the end of the interview, Deadpool comes and just kind of breaks uh, something over the head of Mario Lopez, and he says, "Like, suck it, Slater," or something like that. <laughs> So it's good for them to come out and say because there were a lot of rumors saying that it was it wasn't going to be as I guess grown up as it was, and that was kind of their way of putting those rumors to rest. Which was yeah, like, I mean, this has been a labor of love for uh, Ryan Reynolds, who's obviously right. plays um, Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool, in this movie. He he produced this. He's basically kind of stayed it from Deadpool's original appearance in uh, Wolverine Origins uh, to to this point now, and. I think it's like through sheer like his will and a few of the the kind of the writers who were involved. I think they pretty much kind of just pushed it uphill through Hollywood for the best part of a decade to get it made. I think that makes the film somewhat a bit more special as well because you can clearly see he's wanted this for so long. He played a Blade character at one point. Uh, it's like one of Blade's uh, followers, and then and then you know played Green Lantern. Yeah, Green Lantern. I, I think he would admit that was a. Flop. In fact, they, I'm glad they uh, highlight that in the uh, Deadpool movie as well. <laughs> uh, but it was nice to see he finally got his proper hero movie that he really, really wanted. Yeah, it's that's quite endearing, really. It's amazing that Ryan Reynolds actually got this far because as charming as he is and as likable as he is, he does not, by uh, as a rule, make good films. Like, <laughs> yeah. can, I mean, can you seriously name a film that's particularly good that he made? He gets. He has certainly more misses than he gets hits. He, I mean, he gets a lot of praise for Buried, which was kind of a indie kind of. Yeah, I like, I like Van Wilder. To be honest with yeah, you. I was gonna say Van Wilder was not too bad. Yeah, but it's still kind of like his early break. It was still kind of like a trashy teen movie. He's never really, you know. I mean, how long ago was Van Wilder as well? I bet you it was Quite close long. to fifteen years ago. Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Absolutely. I um, like him as an actor, personally, but. Or as a guy, I don't know, but one of the two, he, I, I like what he does, but I know what you mean, I've not, not had a massive, massive movie in that sense. Yeah, he seems to be somebody who should be a bigger star than the other, he just does not get good breaks. Um, yeah. So he's kind of made his own in this movie, and he's obviously pushed for it, because there's him uh, and the two uh, writers, uh, I always forget the names, let me just uh, grab that up, uh, the two writers are uh, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick. Um, and pretty much, the, I think the three of them all kind of sat around and wrote this together. Really, wrote it, uh, you know, just to kind of make sure it was spot on for the characters. Because they're all big fans, and they there's a lot of rumours as well suggesting that um, it was either uh, the two writers or possibly the director Tim Miller who leaked that test footage about a year ago. Which yeah, ultimately is what got this film made when it drummed up a lot of interest. It was a stroke of genius, so and I, I would bet that it was done on purpose and it was oh, done in a way definitely. to kind of make it look like. Oh, here we go. Uh, check this out. This is what could have happened. And it was a really well done kind of little thing. It was all CGI, but Ray Reynolds did the voiceover. He did the motion capture and stuff. Yeah, it was, it was uh, really good. I, I never really give a shit about it, but when I saw that, I thought, oh, well, it, it actually looks pretty fun and interesting. Like, I was never somebody rooting for a Deadpool movie. If it came, great. If it didn't, oh, well. But I did I did really like that promo that, that, that was leaked. I well, I mean, I, I did... did... Go on, sorry. Go, no, no, you go on, sorry. I just think the amount of... I hype there was around in terms of the advertising was incredible. I'd, I've not seen a film other than something like, you know, Bond, etc., where you've got like this whole fanfare and, and, and all sorts of advertising on it. It's had an incredible amount of advertising for such a, what is considered a lower budget type yeah, Marvel you're right. film. They, um, they didn't really seem to go particularly, they didn't go big with the marketing, but they went smart with it. They played up to the, the character. 
and the tone of the film, that kind of silly meta humor. Yeah, the marketing team deserves an Oscar if there's an yeah. Oscar for marketing <laughs> team, because one, it's yeah. really well done. And as you say, it's played up to the character, played up to the auditors' kind of um, likes and dislikes, and the, what they know about the character, and just emphasize what the movie is going to be about is you know it's just going to be silly it's not going to be taken seriously i don't know if you guys saw the uh, valentine's day yes. posters for it yeah. i thought that was amazing as I, well. I, was, I, I couldn't i just really wanted to meet somebody who would act like a, like somebody who'd, a girl who'd gone to it thinking it was a romantic comedy oh well uh, I, 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 t I remember telling my wife and she was she, she didn't believe me that i wanted to see like uh, a romantic film on valentine's day it wasn't so much <laughs> she didn't know what deadpool was i mean she didn't she clearly had no clue but she was like why do you want to see this film that makes no sense like what well, what's going on like she was just really really kind of i actually <laughs> uh, i actually did see this on valentine's day but um I, I but, but uh, my girlfriend didn't know exactly what it was so it wasn't like i tried to trick her or anything <laughs> like that but uh yeah i mean it, it's it's quite fun it, what what is i mean I, I said at the beginning of this this podcast that i didn't like this as much as you guys i said i give this about 65 percent. what what did you guys give it I, I give, give it. Go on, I, give, you go. I give it eighty yeah, percent. That's good. Yeah, I well, I give eighty six. So similar. See, I, you guys are, seem to be closer to the average, um, seeing as the overall score was kind of uh, the low eighties. Um, it was I mean, the like, what, fun what did that you I got from it? Really, I guess for me, it just it was fun. It was what I expected. It was different from a lot of other movies I've seen. I tell you, if you guys you guys tell me what you really liked about the movie, because I think I I, I give it a low score. I don't dislike this movie at all. I really liked it. I enjoyed it, um, but I think I probably like the same things as you guys. I probably just had I probably took issue with a few thing took issue with things more than most other people who watched it. So if you guys go through what you liked, I'll probably agree with you, and then, well, and then I'll tell you what I, what what problems I had with the movie. See, I think eighty percent the one I gave it is it's kind of. I thought it puts me in the similar boat as you, but I mean, you've given it a much lower score than I have, almost 20% less. I mean, Maybe I'm most just harder. People, <laughs> most people that I've spoken to and seen on the internet, I've just been losing their shit over it. And I'm like, yeah, this is a good movie. It made me laugh. It had some really good scenes. I don't think it was that good, though. Like, I'm really happy that there's going to be a sequel, and I'm really happy that kind of it wasn't as bad as, you know, the Wolverine origin movies have been. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, that's true, you know, actually. This is better than any of the Wolverine movies and I really liked um, the Wolverine the one where it's the, the, the last Wolverine movie set in Japan I, I enjoyed the hell out of that I just felt th thought it fell flat towards the end uh, but I'd still probably say this I enjoyed this more yeah but, um, yeah I think you're right Cash maybe maybe I'd gone harsher because I, I, I'm a bit like perplexed as to why people are getting like saying this is like acting as if this is the best thing that's happened for, for years yeah, like I say, it's it's a great movie, and absolutely anyone who hasn't watched it needs to go watch it because it's you will enjoy it. It's not going to be kind of a waste of time. There's if if you even know remotely anything about Deadpool and his character, you'll enjoy this movie. Um, the the humor is kind of childish, even though it's no gear towards like a R rated audience. There's full on like naked women, and that, that, as far as I know, that hasn't happened in a Marvel movie for a long, long time. It has happened that way. <laughs> Um, and it's it's just really good, and um, the references that I have to the X Men are in there as well. And it's, one of the bits I liked was when Colossus is tracking him away, and he's like, "Right, we're gonna go speak to Professor Xavier." And Deadpool's like, "Is it McAvoy or Stewart? I don't know which one. I can't yeah, keep like up that. with this." Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was the, it was good because the humor kind of Deadpool is kind of very um, I don't know, kind of high school dirty joke type humor. But he also got the, has, has the, the meta aspect, so there's loads of reference to kind of the real world. Like there's a there's a bit where you see your action figure of the Deadpool <laughs> from the Origins movie, and he's like, "Oh, that wasn't a high point." Um, there's like you know, you, you, Mark, you mentioned before that they they take the piss out of the Green Lantern, uh, yeah. and that, that that being a flop. There's loads of like little meta jokes like that. Um, there's loads of references to Hugh Jackman just in general. Yeah, I like it when he's uh, the sexiest man alive magazine. He pulled it out and. At the end, where she takes off his mask and it's got his face on it. Yeah, it's just it's, it's loads of just like stupid meta stuff, which is it's good because it, it's good. Uh, it matches with the kind of source material of the character. Um, so they the, the captured the spirit of it, and there was a there was a few really really funny bits. There was a few really big laughs in this movie, but one of the one of the problems I had with the, the kind of humor aspect of this movie is that I felt it missed more than it hit. 
with a lot of the jokes. I felt well, like um, it, I, I don't know, just Jed, for for all the kind of quick fire quips he was doing throughout the film, I think most of them were kind of like uh, they would make me kind of like exhale, like huh. And I only really remember, <laughs> you know, I wasn't really laughing. I was just like, huh, oh, that, that's kind of funny. Yeah, um, I remember. Of, there's one scene where he. Uh, he has a fourth wall moment, and then in that moment, he has another fourth wall moment, and then he, he makes some comment about it being 16 walls or something, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then there's like some really big laughs that got everyone in the, in the cinema laughing, like when he, when he cuts his arm off and his hand's just hanging off the, hanging off the handcuff with giving him, like, giving Colossus the finger. I yeah. Reference um, to the, the yeah, there was this, I was, like, yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> there's just, there, there was some good bits, but generally speaking, I just felt like he was trying a little too hard at all times. Um, I just felt like it, I just felt like a lot of the humor missed. I, I would honestly say it's like a, a, it's like a two to one aspect, like a two to one ratio. I was, uh, I was, I was next to my girlfriend, and then next to there, there were some guys who were a bit younger, definitely comic kind of fans and a bit geeky like ourselves, really. And they were really laughing hard at the, some of the jokes, and I laughed at some of them quite, quite a bit. But then my girlfriend was just like, nah. <laughs> She was doing the same as me. I mean, that's it, because I suppose your girlfriend isn't as invested in who Deadpool yeah. is and what he does than, say, you or the kind of the guys that you're sitting next to. And it's kind of a good metaphor to people, like, if you're going to enjoy this movie or not. If you know something about it, then yeah, absolutely. If you're kind of going in blind, a lot of the references, like you say, to like the other movies, to Hugh Chapman, to yeah. Wolverine, exactly. to even Marvel in general, is just going to go way over your head. I don't know. I didn't think they were that obscure. Like, I think if my, I like, I think if my mom watched this, I think she'd get enough of the references that like they they would pull them off. Like, she's seen X Men and she knows who Hugh Jackman is. Um, I like. I just think. I just. I don't think. You, I think if if it was a better film, you wouldn't have to have pre existing knowledge of Deadpool to appreciate this. I just think. I just. Th- I just think that the the, the, the miss quite a bit on the humor a lot of the time. Don't get me wrong. It's still a funny movie. I just oh, felt yes. like. There were so many quick fire jokes that kind of fell flat, but the fact that he moved, he's all, by the time you, you're processing why that one's not that funny, he's already moved on to the, like, the third the one down the row. Um, so it didn't, it didn't a big problem. It just, I didn't feel like it was as funny as it should have been. Um, and I don't know, like, maybe, I just, maybe I'm expecting too much from Deadpool, but the whole central plot is just fucking stupid. Oh, the plot's <laughs> definitely not the best plot. But like, the whole plot is that he can't go back to his girlfriend because he's ugly, but he doesn't even give her the chance to reject him. Yeah, like kind of a self self exile kind of thing. Yeah, and I just like uh, and it wasn't yeah. that in comparison to what what he looked in the first kind of scene where he, where his skin went, you know, like it did. That was definitely worse in that scene than it was in the rest of the scenes. You, you weren't the only person to say that. Um, a friend of, at work who loves comic books, he he said exactly the same thing. He said, like, by the end of the film, I was like, well, that just looks like Ryan Reynolds with, like, X-Men. Yeah. yeah. yeah Bad X-Men. It, did, it, doesn't... it didn't look... It, it's almost like they didn't keep that same level for whatever reason of ugliness. Like, yeah. like you say, when he first came out of the thing, he looked like bloody hell. Maybe we and, just got used to it, but I, 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 don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I, I'd have to look at some comparison pictures because I don't think that they, they were the same. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe we just kind of got used to it. Like, I guess his girlfriend did in the end. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was nearly getting offensive at one point with it, but I, I thought if you're just a bit closer to the bone, they'd have been a bit in trouble with some of the uh, possible critics out there, I guess. In terms of, you know, the, how they would try to portray it as being bad when really it wasn't. What do you guys um, do? You guys remember Spawn in the nineties? Oh, Michael J. White. Yeah, I remember. yeah. He looked far fucking worse than. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to he, was, he wasn't burned. He was just fucking dead, wasn't he? Essentially. But he, he burned to death. <laughs> oh yeah, and then he <laughs> and he dead. Yeah. Um, like yeah, he looked far worse than uh, what Ryan Reynolds looks like, and it's like it still looks like Ryan Reynolds. Like when he's when he gets a kind of all kind of gross and shit he he still looks like you can still see he's got a fucking six pack and he's getting handsome underneath that you think you're not fooling anybody Reynolds um, <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you what wang out, hanging out everywhere yeah um, I'll tell you what though like, as much as like he, he didn't look that like gruesome considering that's like the main crux of the plot 
I thought the costume looked looked really cool. Yeah, yeah the costume looks well brilliant. I think it's really well done, and um, it's, it's it looks really kind of authentic. And I mean, I think they must have done some CGI with the eyes because there's times yeah. where the eyes would kind of pop out, you know, when he was kind of shocked or when yeah. he was getting angry. And I think I, I think they were like was... animated, like real eyes. They weren't just like stuck on a costume. Yeah, yeah, they were animated, and it's like in the comics as well. Like you wouldn't have Spider-Man with those eyes. Like you see in the movie all the way through, they kind of go up and they go down, and depending on his tone and his expression, and it's the same with Deadpool, and yeah, they, they kept to that as well, and you could tell what was going on in his mind and what his kind of attitude was when he was saying a line and if he was having a joke or if he was, you know, annoyed or shocked or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, I mean, I, I don't know, as I say, I'm not a huge, I don't know a huge amount about Deadpool, but it seemed strange that he, he had a girlfriend. And that was like the central plot. I, I was under the impression that he was reasonably normal until his experiment, and then he went insane, and that's when the kind of craziness started. Whereas that was just kind of him from the off in this. I think, from what I remember the comics, it was. He, you kind of write in the sense that he was himself, and like, if he doesn't make, if you notice, he doesn't make any fourth wall references when he's normal Ryan Reynolds. It's only once he has the okay. experiment, he goes insane. He then kind of starts breaking the fourth wall, and I mean, this kind of. An idea behind that that the experiment you know opened his senses if you will to that sense but yeah he was kind of for all intents and purposes just a normal person uh yeah he still had a bit of that zany personality but it was then amplified uh, yeah, as he went through kind of experiment yeah absolutely but yeah. uh it just didn't feel it didn't it didn't sit with me that this kind of psychotic insane mutant had a just wanted his girlfriend back <laughs> It just it just felt weird. Um, not that it's like bad in the context of the film, but I just it's not what I kind of expected from from. I guess Deadpool. it was an easy plot for them to choose in that sense, or relatable plot to choose. If, they, if I, it was a low budget as it was, and they wanted it to be fairly well widely accepted, I guess they had to go with something that was kind of relatable. He was with his girlfriend for a year. They were going to get married, and aside from his good looks, that was like the only other thing in his life. And I suppose it's him just trying to get back. What no, I mean, well, I you're right. It, it, it's maybe I, I think it's me just picking picking fucking holes in it. To be honest, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I suppose what you try to say is it's kind of a cliche plot in a non-cliche kind of setting because the character itself. I, I, I don't is... know. If, I don't even know if that's what I'm getting at. It just it didn't. I, I, from what I know about him, it just didn't feel like Deadpool would give a fuck about a woman he used to know before his life as Deadpool. Hmm. Um. I don't know. The only like the uh, the only thing I know, the only romantic interest I've ever known him have is um, Mistress Death in the comics, who was yeah. basically the Grim Reaper. She's, so, it's, it is Death essentially, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, she's just a skeleton chick who causes trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, it's, it's done really well though in terms of how much it's made. I just I was reading actually, that. I just wanted to want to bring up James Gunn was mentioning about this film, wasn't he? Uh, during the week, he, he was yeah saying. You know, it's been vastly different compared to a lot of other films, and I guess he felt felt akin to it because Guardians was obviously quite different as well. And uh, all the saying all the Hollywood bits were like, "Oh, let's just copy Deadpool," but not actually get the point that it's different, and that's the bit they should copy on it. Yeah, I think he was saying the the, the danger is that Hollywood just says, "Oh, R-rated action films make tons of money now. Let's yeah, just let's start pumping that. them out." Yeah. Whereas really, the lesson is you just let people who have a passion for this. Do something with them with a middling budget and see yeah. what can come of it. Because sometimes it'll hit the you know it'll hit the nail on the head. Yeah, and this money, yeah, sorry, this this film's made like what 130 million or something. Yeah, yeah, it's... million budget, isn't it? Oh, eight million protracted, something. something like that. Yeah, it's it's crazy the amount of money it's made. Um, and it, it it's crazy when you think I know superheroes are a huge thing, and maybe Deadpool is just more well known than we we seem to give him credit for. But people seem to know. Enough about them that they're going in droves, mm. yeah, because yeah. this isn't this isn't even like I, I don't know how how well known in, in kind of like general the general population that I don't know how well known it's it is that X Men technically isn't a Marvel Studios thing it's a Fox thing yeah I don't know how well known that that fact is or whether people just say oh it's Marvel so I think it. in recent years it's become more and more. Um, aware for the simple reason that people have probably said, "Oh, how come Avengers don't team up with the X Men?" Or how come? 
I mean, especially with the last Avengers movie where you had uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch that are kind of, you know, the son and daughter of Magneto. They weren't allowed to yeah. say mutant. They weren't allowed to say that they were daughter of uh, the, the children of Magneto either. Um, so that's why they had to change their kind of story. Uh, yeah, they're just the people now, exactly, aren't they? Exactly, with the Avengers universe. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of people uh, would have been aware going into that just because, uh, you know, there's people talking on the internet and people kind of make these debates and stuff like that. And they all know it's all Marvel because they have the same kind of intro scene, you know, the uh, comic books flipping. Uh, so I, I think it's probably more well known now than it was, say, if, more a few years ago. I mean, it's, it was big news when the, um, they had the rights to use Spider-Man in uh, Captain America Three. Yeah, uh, they back, and I think that's that's kind of helped bring it to the limelight. And I think it's silly; it should all be brought under one roof, or they should have free reign with the characters. Well, I mean, I'm quite happy. I'm, well, I'm not happy, but I'm quite content with X-Men being separate because you can kind of say that world, it deals with mutants and then Marvel deals with like everything else. And, you know, because mutants are like feared and hated by the public, whereas Captain America, like, you know, you've got kids wearing his T-shirt and shit in, in the Marvel universe. It doesn't really marry up that super people are loved and mutants are hated. So I'm, I, don't, I don't think it matters that they're, them two are separate, but like everybody else could cross over. <laughs> and I don't, you know, and I, I, it wouldn't matter too much, I suppose, if like you had like Wolverine appear in an Avengers movie because you know people like him. I mean, you often um, do think in these movies, don't you? Know, oh, why don't you just call such and such up? They'll sort that out for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty boring. <laughs> but yeah. So, what well, I mean, was there anything else you guys really liked about this film? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty settled on that. So much. I, I mean, I like the use of the fourth wall to make it a bit different. I know it's been used. Before and it's not new anymore, but it, it was a nice, nice touch. So I mean, it's a, it's a key aspect of his character, and it's nice yeah. that they they made such good use out of it. Yeah, I really liked um, the X Men in there, uh, Colossus and uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, Nega, yeah. Nega Teenage Sonic Warheads. If I said that yes. right, Nega Sonic Teenage Warheads. She's she's actually a real X Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she in is. one issue of a comic. Yeah, I think uh, it was. I think it was a Deadpool comic. I think. Oh, was it? I think it was. A, yeah, the Deadpool comic, which this film is kind of loosely based upon. Oh right, I, didn't uh, know that. I just knew that she was a very, very, very minor X Man. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's, it hasn't been mentioned at all, and I wonder if they'll kind of use her again in the next Deadpool or even the next uh, X Men movie. I Jesus, I wouldn't be surprised if she has her own comic by next year. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because okay. it looked like they used um, the X Men. Professor Xavier's house uh, prop from the other movies, but yeah, they did, it really yeah. was literally just Colossus and uh, Deadpool <laughs> there, and even Deadpool was like, we haven't used enough money to hire the other X-Men or something well, like that. I was, um, I was listening to a, a podcast earlier today where Ryan Reynolds was on talking about the film, and he said that they basically had to sit down and really play with who they could have in this film, and it was like, oh, we want Wolverine because he's kind of closely linked to Deadpool, yeah. not too expensive, how can we have this person nope too expensive yeah. uh, can we have her no schedule and conflict and they basically had to basically they, he basically settled on uh, Colossus because Colossus has been in a lot of the X-Men films but he's never been a main character and he's never really been done justice uh, like in terms of his comic book persona yeah he's, he's done really well here he's kind of got the accent he's got the build he's got the kind of personality as well he's, he's even just, though he's kind of big huge metal guy he's quite passive he's quite you know he doesn't he's want like to this completely stuff. like righteous yeah. hero who can't do any wrong or doesn't want to do any wrong and, and, and you know it's it's kind of cool that um, the, the Russian was a good guy this time <laughs> yeah makes a nice change I really like the scene where they're in the taxi cab for the second time where the X-Men are in the back uh, and they're driving to like the final battle if you will and, oh yeah uh, he's just taking the mic out of the X-Men he goes yeah yeah I'll, I'll think about joining your boy band he's like it's not a boy band <laughs> Yeah, I did like Colossus. That is funny. Um, I thought he was he was good. And yeah, the uh, Negasonic teenage warhead was kind of good. Uh, like she was the archetypal sullen teenager. Yeah, um, and it was a good scene where Deadpool was like, "Oh, what's it gonna be? Sullen silence or cutting remark?" And she's like, "Okay, you got me." He's like, ah, I'm <laughs> and he kept calling her like Sinead, and he said like nothing compares to you and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was really good as well. Uh, nice touch was that, just a bit different, wasn't it? In that, in that sense as well. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Deadpool knows how stupid, like super, all the whole superhero thing is in terms of like the context of everyday life, and he kind of just takes the piss out of, out of everybody else, not really stopping to think that he's in exactly the same position. Yeah, yeah exactly. 
Um, but yeah, I, I mean, as, like, as I say, I didn't give this as high rating as you guys. Um, I think like kind of a summary of my opinion is I, I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a decent uh, comic book kind of action movie. I thought they did the character Deadpool great justice. Um, and I thought they made effective use of the budget, which obviously is a bit has been a lot lower than a lot of other comic book movies you get. I mean, you you said Mark about fifty million, which rings a bell as about right. Yes. Um, but I think that, as I mentioned before, I think a lot of the humor misses more than it hits. Um, I think the overall plot just felt a bit like an ex- just felt like it was almost an excuse just to have one instead of just like spending two hours with Deadpool doing random shit, um, and. Uh, like uh, I, I never I don't know I was never that excited by it despite it having like a lot of action sequences because ultimately Deadpool can't die and I don't like there was nothing at stake really at any time and the villains weren't particularly compelling which is a criticism you can level up most Marvel mm. films to be honest ironically X-Men movies usually have the better villains because they're the ones that you know they're kind of anti-heroes more than outright villains like you know Magneto is always yeah. kind of as a, a character a deep character in his own right um and like I came away from the thing, and yeah, I enjoyed that because it was a, it was a good Deadpool movie, but it still just felt like an average comic book movie to me. Yeah. So you're not you're not tempted to uh, raise your score then? No, I think I'm I think I'm at peace with it. Uh, <laughs> and I, I feel like um, I, I, God, I don't know. I feel like in the past, and, and like I've been guilty of this as well. Um, I I was le- like I. I always lean on the side of like liking things a bit too much, maybe. And if we're going to give them a proper score, I'm going to try and make better use of the overall scale. So, like, I was thinking, I'm I'm not in love with Deadpool. So, if I give it an eighty percent, I'm really narrowing the the bracket I can use for something I really like. Fair enough. Um, I mean, like, I I, I I've just finished doing the a, a written review for the Revenant, and I I like that a lot more than this movie. I only give that an eighty-five percent. <laughs> All oh, right, fair enough. We'll have to. I'll have to compare you my score on that as well. <laughs> I think my uh, summary on Deadpool is that I, I really enjoyed it going in. I was really worried that it was going to be another kind of Wolverine or origin movie. It's just going to look good on paper, sound good on the advertising, but just fall really flat in its face. But it did. It made me laugh. I enjoyed it. I had a really good time. Uh, would I watch it again? Absolutely. It probably wouldn't be while it's still on its cinema run. I'd probably pick it up on uh, DVD or Blu-ray when it comes out. Uh, I'd keep it in my uh, ever-growing Marvel uh, collection. <laughs> I think it's, it's fitting as well that Ryan Reynolds' um, career almost took a nosedive when he first played Deadpool, and uh, he's now kind of got that career back, and he's back on the kind of the A-list uh, again with that same character. Now that he's done it justice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, similar. I'll stick my eight six percent. It just it made me have a good time. It was a good cinema experience. The whole movie was fun, easy going. Different compared to what we've seen before. I love, I love action, you know, movies. So all the Marvels, etc. But just nice to see something a bit different. And I'm, I'm happy for for Ryan Reynolds. I think he's a an accolade that he should be proud of as well. Nice to see him back on the big screen again, really. And yeah, just a good all round movie. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I kind of agree with you guys. I think um, I, I think I like what this movie is rather than. I, I like this movie. What this movie is and its accomplishments more than I actually enjoyed the movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like. Yeah, so I think we're kind of on the same page. I'm just maybe a little bit down on some of it more than you guys. <laughs> but yeah, Deadpool. I am I say that I am. I am looking forward to the promised sequel. Um, I saw an article the other day saying that Stephen Lang wants to be Cable in the next movie. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys can know who Stephen Lang is. He's the. Um, I suppose he's the villain in Avatar. The the Colonel. Yeah. Oh wow, that'd be awesome. He'd be fucking awesome as Cable. Yeah. He'd be fucking good. I, I hope that's what they do for Deadpool too. I mean, I know you said that at the end of the credits, uh, which I stayed for actually. Uh, I just yeah. knew that there's going to be some after the credits. Yeah, we we good. stayed until it cleared out pretty much. Um, well, in that uh, I said uh, I watched listened to that podcast sorry earlier, and he said that they actually were trying to cast and have Cable appear in that post credit. Oh. Bit, but they could never get it. Like they just couldn't get it sorted, so they just thought they'd mention it. But yeah, they're already writing a script for a sequel, and it's got Cable in it, allegedly. Good, that'd oh. be good. Yeah, that would be Cable the Deadpool is always good times. Yeah, so yeah, I, I'm, I, I look forward to a to a, a sequel. But um, yeah, it's nice to see Ryan Reynolds fucking get a get a break, and <laughs> hopefully we'll see some more kind of obscure heroes that are a bit different. 
Yeah, let's um, see what see what spawns from this, I guess. Yeah, can't wait for Squirrel Girl in a few years. <laughs>